Hi, this is a quick Tuesday afternoon update on Hurricane Michael. As always, the thoughts here are just mine, and if you're looking for information specific to your location and impacts for your local area, consult the National Weather Service forecast office assigned to your region and your county's emergency management officials for the latest information that is pertinent to you. We continue to watch Hurricane Michael now moving north-northwestward across the Gulf of Mexico and strengthening as it does so. Uh, we've seen a, a maturing structure today with a clear eye now showing up on satellite imagery uh, as the storm continues to grow stronger. Uh, the inner core has been a little bit asymmetric with convective bursts continuously firing across the northern and eastern sides of the eye, trying to wrap around to the southern side and complete a solid eye wall all the way around. To this point, Michael has been unable to accomplish this. Uh, but this has been intensifying steadily regardless as these convective bursts are strong and are releasing a lot of heat, warming the eye, causing pressure falls, and therefore strengthening the circulation. We can see the latest recon observations from the plane that was in there about two hours ago, showing pressure falls to about 966 millibars, lower means stronger, as the system was moving north-northwest, as you can see from the center fixes, center fixes in orange here. We will have more planes investigating the storm this evening and later on tonight. Uh, the planes have measured winds of about 110 miles per hour at a maximum, making this a strong Category 2, although the 5 p.m. NHC advisory that will be out as soon as this video is posted uh, will likely upgrade this to a Category 3 storm with winds of about 120 miles per hour at a maximum. And additional strengthening is expected as this nears the coast. The storm has shown resiliency uh, in the face of some moderate vertical shear that does still exist. We can see evidence of that on the western side as some of these uh, shallow cumulus uh, showers have, are having their tops blown toward the east uh, lightly, uh, indicating this uh, easterly shear uh, toward the storm center. And uh, so some shear does still exist. This is the same flow that's going to eventually force the storm to turn toward the right, pushing on it. Uh, but this could also theoretically take some of this dry air on the west side and punch it in to the inner core at some point, uh, potentially disrupting the eye wall. This is the one thing that might be able to hinder Michael before landfall, but so far this has not happened, and the most likely outcome seems to be continued intensification, and it would not be surprising to see Michael become a Category 4 hurricane prior to landfall. Uh, the storm did just pass over a cooler eddy of shallow warm water in the Gulf of Mexico, and so it may have upwelled a little bit more cooler water than normal, and uh, that actually may have hindered the storm a little bit today, although it certainly hasn't felt like it as it has strengthened despite this. It is now moving e over even warmer, uh, deeper warm water on its way northward, and so this is another sign that would favor uh, continued strengthening before landfall. We're now under 24 hours from expected landfall. Uh, it's expected to be somewhere in the vicinity of Panama City, uh, Florida, and uh, this is not something you can ever pin down with absolute precision as wobbles a few dozen miles to the left or the right can always happen unexpectedly with these storms, but there is strong consensus for this general region of the coastline here in northwestern Florida. The reasonable envelope of tracks that could potentially happen include uh, as far east as a tr of a track that might pass over, say, Apalachicola and then through Leon County. It could that could happen as far east as that, ranging from that to as far west as Destin, and then through southeast Alabama and southwest Georgia. That's probably the most reasonable envelope of potential tracks that could theoretically happen. Right now, the consensus is near Panama City, and again, regardless, uh, dangerous conditions will extend even away from the eye, although that's where the strongest winds will be. We also have a wind field that extends outward up to 200 miles for tropical storm force winds on the eastern side, and that will push strong surge into Appalachie Bay and most of the Florida Panhandle coastline near and east of the landfall point. Storm surge inundation above 10 feet is possible in some of these areas, and if you have received an evacuation order, please do leave. Those are issued for very good reasons. Here's the official forecast track showing what I basically just said for the track, uh, generally north-northeastward sometime tomorrow afternoon, potentially as early as noon, depending on the exact forward speed, will bring the eye ashore, and dangerous weather will begin long before that. In the early morning hours, outer spiral bands will begin raking the coastline with tropical storm force winds, and there's the potential for isolated tornadoes as well. And since that could occur during the nighttime hours tonight, make sure you have an emergency uh, weather radio able to wake you should those warnings uh, be issued. Uh, again, this will be moving uh, fairly quickly as it approaches the coast, and so this will limit the potential for inland flooding due to freshwater rainfall. Uh, however, up to 10 inches of rain could fall in some areas near and southeast of the landfall point, and uh, that will fall in short order. So the potential for flooding does exist, and flash flood watches 
have been issued. Hurricane warning exists all the way along the coast, and again, storm surge is the big concern here, uh, but destructive winds will also be a concern in the eyewall, as again, a Category 3 or 4 storm can produce structure damaging winds uh, over 120, 130 miles per hour right along the coast, and uh, so wind damage is also a concern with this storm. Uh, power outages will be widespread, including well inland, because the storm will uh, be moving quickly, and so it will maintain hurricane force wind gusts for uh, some time inland from the coast, and so there, there will be a wide swath where uh, damage uh, to, and power outages will be a big problem over portions of the southeastern U.S., and we could see heavy rainfall and power outages even spreading into the Carolinas as the system accelerates toward the northeast, and we even have tropical storm watches along the southeastern coast uh, for winds that may be coming off the ocean at that point on shore and uh, being able to accelerate to tropical storm force. So that's uh, it for the updates for Michael today. I myself live in Tallahassee and so am preparing with everyone else as I encourage the rest of you to do if you live in this area of coastline. And I will not be able to update as frequently as I might like to, uh, but follow me on social media for little updates here and there as the storm makes its way toward shore. We're under a day to go now. Everyone stay safe. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.